Who's heard of Wegovy or Ozempic? They've been all over the news, and these are actually the same drug, just given different doses to produce, uh, to treat obesity or type 2 diabetes. The generic name is semaglutide, and the drug is based on a hormone that occurs naturally in the body, but the drug design makes it last a lot longer in circulation. So people can lose about 15% of their body weight. Uh, there are some gastrointestinal side effects with semaglutide, so people start with a really small dose and they increase it over a long period of time to the maximum dose to reduce those issues. But surprisingly, we don't fully understand how semaglutide works. So I wanted to know, how does semaglutide change eating behavior to produce weight loss? To answer that question, you could ask people on semaglutide about their eating. But then you'd be relying on memory and self-report. And even if people had perfect memories, would they really tell you everything that they ate? And then if you found results, how would you know if they were the physiological effects of the drug or psychological effects from the desire to lose weight or look a certain way or were influenced by a lifetime of reading good and bad nutritional advice? The fact is, setting up an experiment to study food intake in humans that doesn't rely on memory or self-report is extremely expensive. And finding subjects who aren't responding to these psychological factors is probably impossible. And that's where preclinical models, such as rats, come in. Unlike people, rats don't care how much they weigh or what they look like. They don't read dieting advice. And it's relatively easy to monitor what and how they eat. So they're excellent subjects for studying eating behavior in the absence of these psychological factors. And since I was interested in the physiologically driven changes in behavior that make semaglutide effective, and there's very little research using preclinical models that copies the dosing used in humans, I got some rats. And I used specialized cages that let me monitor when, how much, for how long, and at what rate the rats eat. I let them get used to the cages, and then I started treating them with either semaglutide or a control injection. And just like humans, I started them with a really small dose and increased the dose over a long period of time to my maximum dose, which I continued for, uh, for a long time and kept them in the expanse cages throughout the experiment. And so we're going to start looking at some big picture results. The graphs I show will all be whole changed from baseline. The semaglutide rats will be in purple, the controls in green. The timeline is on the x-axis. A vertical line shows you when they advance from the dose escalation to the dose maintenance. And if you're interested in stats, I do have indicators of those outcomes as well. And so we're going to look at food intake. And as you might expect, the rats that got semaglutide ate less. And over the course of the experiment, they ended up being about 15% lighter than the control rats, which is in line with human results. But total intake is the result of behavior, and I wanted to know how it happened. So for that, I had to turn to my meal patterns. And like humans, rats eat in discrete bouts that we call meals. And for a rat uh, or a human to eat less, they would eat, need to eat either fewer or smaller meals. And since meal frequency and meal size are controlled by different pathways in the brain, accurately studying eating behavior produces a neuroscience roadmap. So when we look at meals per day, we can see that the semaglutide rats didn't reduce their intake by eating fewer meals. Instead, they ate smaller meals, and they spent less time eating. And these both indicate that semaglutide increases satiation. My rats also ate at a slower rate, which suggests they uh, diminished motivation to eat. But over time, Meal size and the amount of time spent eating increased while the eating rate remained low. And that brings me to the final conclusion that increased satiation may help produce early weight loss with semaglutide, but it's that reduced motivation to eat that maintains weight loss when semaglutide is continued for a long time. I hope you've um, come to appreciate the value of preclinical models and rigorous behavioral testing for studying obesity treatments. And maybe you know just a little bit more about this drug that's been all over the news. Thank you.